here once again DDC TV and we are here with a very special guest hailing all the way from Lafayette Louisiana via Birmingham and now here in Atlanta how you doing brother Good. Frankie Smalls in the building Doing good, bro. all right all right all right so uh man you got a lot going on man actually I'm doing great I don't ever say good I say great okay, okay. <laughs> I had to I had to uh, get focused real quick. All right, all good, all good, man. Well, uh, you know, we're very blessed to have you here, man, and um, really uh, looking to dive in and see what you got going on. So, what brings you to Atlanta? Uh, music. I just, um, I just come down here to, to put on for myself and my family and uh, make shit happen. This is boy Nick Fury, multi-platinum producer. Shout out to Tip Ti for letting us use his second home studio. Um, Millennium Music is on the rise. DDC TV is already popping. You know what it is. I come from Lafayette, Louisiana. Um, I was born and raised there. And then at, at around age 15, I moved to uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And then the transition between the two was like a culture shock, man. It was like so uplifting and happy and just you, so much stuff to do to move into Birmingham where it was um, like people playing uh, basketball in the gym with cowboy boots on. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, Wait, they was wearing cowboy boots? And the first day I walked, that's what the first moment I walked into to that school and uh, I walked through the doors at the gym early in the morning. Like everybody sits in the bleachers, they were playing basketball. Um, it's fucking cowboy. Wait, 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 wait. Was these black people or white people? Both. Really? Both. Yeah. They were in cowboy boots. Yeah, <laughs> cowboy boots. I, I was like, this. That's my first perception of Alabama. <laughs> now that's funny because you know we definitely think of Alabama as country, country as hell, right? <laughs> and then to go there and see that your first time, that's yeah. hilarious. And so like the perception fit automatically when I walked through the door, but after that it was just like when I got to see the city. Like it was, it was, uh, it was dangerous. What? Why did you move to Birmingham? Because it seems like you said life was happy. Yeah, a lot of things to do. My my family got a um, my mom and my stepdad got a divorce, and after that it was like downhill slope. I was by myself. I raised myself from uh, fifteen, like fourteen, fifteen years old to to now. <laughs> you raised yourself. I raised myself. So you didn't have a parent or an older person in the home? None. Just me. So how, I mean, did and you my, go to school? Yeah, I went to school. I graduated valedictorian. Wait a minute. So you graduated valedictorian? Yeah. And you raised yourself? I raised myself. I, I went to school every day. I, I, I had a chip on my shoulder, so I'm a, I'm a half full type of guy. I, I, I make the best out of every worst situation. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so, like, I had to find a good into the what was going on in my life. My mama would have had a had a drug problem. And so with that, I just had to say, I'm going to do this to feel, for myself to feel accomplished, I guess. I just paid attention to school. I, I, I wasn't a, a nerd or a geek or anything. I was very popular, but I just, I wanted to make a better life for me because I knew I was, I would have kids. I don't have a, I don't have family. So like my grandmother, my mom, and my aunt was literally the only three blood people to me besides my my two brothers, and then I didn't. So that that five people, <laughs> that's that's not a family. Like that's that's a, a household, basically. Like you have five people in a in a normal household. Okay. So you didn't have any like extended support mm -mm. system no, in place. I had my neighbor across the street. She was a um she was a black lady, and I guess that's where I get my my culture from, is. She she fed me uh, fried chicken and, and mashed potatoes and, and Jiffy cornbread. It's my favorite, and uh, okay. <laughs> the sweet cornbread. I love that shit. And, uh, oh man, you know it's funny. I would say that's a um, stereotype, but it's true. No, it, it's it's not even about it's not it's not even about the stereotype. But that is right because uh, some a lot of people do stereotype people off of the. the so okay, so that. <laughs> 
that that kind of brings me into like the next thing, and that is culture. So mm-hmm. I mean, I see you tatted up, I see mm-hmm. you iced out, mm-hmm. and you you actually got a grill. Yeah. And so like you know, people in the streets when they see that, you know, it represents a certain thing. So yeah. like, how do you? When did you first like find that identity, and I, then how have people responded to you? Um. Well. I'm probably like the super minority on where people respond to me because I get it from white and black people. They get both coming at me crazy. Like the white people are like, who, who, what, what is this? Who raised you? Who raised this? Stuff like that. <laughs> I walk through Walmart in my own hometown and they're like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> but then they look at me just like, like I'm a, I'm an alien. And then I get tested a lot from the, in the hood, you know, like if I'm walking, I, I always look like this. I look like an artist. So people going to check me and then no matter what, um, where I'm at, it just, man, I hide a lot of emotions with these shiny jewelry though. So, okay. So have you ever gotten into an altercation with somebody, just somebody just out of pocket, just testing you just because of how you look? Yeah, of course. Of course. that I get that. Like I'm a walking lick to a lot of people. And so I have to be ready for that at all times. And when I'm outside, I'm constantly watching. I got I got shot a year and a half ago in my own home city. Really? Yeah. Okay. I've been shot before, but you never know. No. Nah. Where did you get shot? In my leg right here. Ooh. Okay. So you're lucky. Yeah, it was like very close to hitting the, that whatever that is back here. Yeah. 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 I got hit with a ricochet <laughs> from a white boy. White on white crime. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 they stole my car, man. Wait a minute. So the white boys is banging in Birmingham? No. No. I mean, yeah, but no. They were just I think it was all a setup. I went to California to the Grammys last year. Or no, to the Oscars. And when I come back I shot a video down there. I did a whole bunch of stuff with, with my music career while I was there and people in Birmingham or envy, they they had that's the worst trait a man could carry is envy, bro, because that could ruin relationships, that could ruin your job, your career, it could ruin a lot of things in life. life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And by you being jealous of the next man's moves, and you watching somebody's pockets, that's that's the worst trait to me, because that that's what I deal with on a daily. I've had the closest people to me, only around me for certain reasons, dealing with. Who, who they could get around or who I can introduce them to because, I mean, I, I've lost out on, on, a, on a deal because of that. Because the per- I walk outside the smoke and when I come back in, my homeboy is over there, he's a rapper, and he's over there talking to the, the label and they like, all right, we gotta wrap this up. And then so when they wrapped it up, I'm like, what the hell happened? You know what I'm saying? I was supposed to go out and come back in and ha- have the rest of the meeting. You know, they were ready to sign me. And they was, I asked them, I said, just be real. I, everybody left the room. I said, just be real. What happened? And they was like, your homeboy come over here. And he was like, you don't, your team ain't solid. He was like, I don't, I don't need an unloyal team coming into my circle that's loyal and disrupting what I have going on. And he so was wait like, a minute. So your homeboy messed up your deal. Yeah. What, um, what label was that? That was, I'm not going to speak on the label name, but this, it, it was, it was a, a great opportunity I had that was missed because of was it um, an Atlanta company? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So are, that that's messed up, man. I would've been pissed off. Yeah, I was. Oh, I, I cut everybody. I don't. I don't hang around rappers. I don't hang around singers. I'll be around producers and engineers. My wife, and that's it. Right. right I don't right. need. I don't need fifty fifty people to to make me feel like I'm a I'm a rapper. I can do that by myself. I'm on the stage by myself. I came in this world by myself. I'm gonna leave a back this by myself. <laughs> show enough, show enough. So, what kind of music do you bring to the people? Because uh, I mean, you from the South. You got all the South cultural influences. So, how do you like describe your your style, your flow, your music? I'm um, I'm, I'm very unique. I mean, I have the melodic sound, but I'm an uplifting spirit. So, like I said, so I I'm a motivational person. I wanna I wanna make the average kid, teenager, 
get up off their ass and go get it. Like the people that are sleeping on their mama's couch and their mama's like, you need to get off your ass and go get you a job. Those are the type of people I speak to. Yeah, and then, yeah, I, mm -hmm, I speak to people with, I, I motivate people to deal with anxiety, depression, suicide, stuff like that, because it, I, I come from a horrible background to where I'm at now. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I'm a white boy in a majority black well, it seems like you had something a lot of people don't have, and that's uh, internal willpower yeah. and self-drive. Because right. for you to get up and go to school every day and be valedictorian by yourself, I mean, most people couldn't do that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, even if you push them and try to force them. So, you know, um, but with that being said, what are some things that you would say to the younger, like, aspiring independent artists out there? Because it sounds like you have a motivational message. Keep your head up, bread up, and maintain. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> no, but for real, like, yeah, that's lit. <laughs> yeah, just go, just go with, chase your dreams, don't give up. Like, like, if you, I think that's that's the reason why I did I graduated valedictorian because I didn't have anybody telling me to do something. So when you, you have somebody, con if your mama tells you, you don't go play at this person's house. You want to play at that person's house because it's uh, it's, it's it's bad. It's Period. that's not exactly. Know it. Why not? Like I I drank alcohol before I was 21, but when I turned 21, I never drank again. Never. I don't drink, I don't smoke weed, I don't do none of that shit. So you don't drink or smoke. I can't get it it blocks my <clears throat> it makes me feel like like lazy. I won't I wouldn't have the work ethic I have now. I I'll, I'll run circles around rappers. I promise you I will, and that's not me being cocky, I'm very humble, but I know my work ethic, my drive, and my creation level is, is high, it's very high. So you working on an EP right now, right? Yeah, I got, um, shit, I got, I've done 1,237 songs since December. 1,200? 1,237 songs. <clears throat> I'm sorry, 1,200? 1, 1,237. Songs since December. December is 18th to be exact. That's when I come here. What do you mean you did 1,200 songs? I recorded. You recorded 1,200 songs? Yep. And a probably about... Is that possible? Probably about, yeah. Probably, Wait a minute. Probably about... Oh, I'm trying to do some math over here because 12... How many days has it been? A lot. So how many songs is that average on a day? <sighs> Man, I need to get a calculator. <laughs> 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 I know I could do... Ten, I, I do seven songs every four hours. My engineer's right here. He'll vouch for me. Seven songs every four hours. Okay, so you, you probably putting in about 14 songs a day, maybe? And I don't sleep. You don't sleep? I sleep when I die. Okay, okay. So it's not the weed, not the alcohol. So what is it? What's keeping you awake all these late hours tonight? I was gifted a special power. <laughs> I was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I never freestyled a day in my life, and everybody that's watching it know it, that knows me. I always wrote, and then now I just can automatically, like, phew, I can freestyle on site. Yeah, we was talking about that, because um, you were saying how um, that's all you do now. You don't even write no more. I had to get right with the man in the mirror. This Atlanta's a powerful place, man. It's very, the energy here is a lot different than your average place that you go. I've been to New York doing music, and it's, uh, I hate I hate New York. Like, I just don't like, it's too fast up there, and it's too business. Everything's so serious all the time. And I don't trust a motherfucker who walks fast, talks fast, and beeps the horn as soon as they get in their car. Right. And those are the three things. <laughs> they walk crazy fast up there. They talk crazy fast, and you can't understand nothing. And then they get in the, in the car and act like they're about to murder the people in front, in front of them. Like, ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a good experience in New York last time I went. I mean, just... I jumped out of the Uber. I told the dude I was about to whoop his ass because he's about to kill me. He pours out in front of the traffic and the damn cars coming flying at me and slamming on the brakes with a finger out the window. I'm like, bro, get me the fuck out of this car. Oh, man. <laughs> That's terrible. Helpless in the back seat. Man, I, I already been in the wreck one time. I'm not doing that again. So tell us about your name, Frankie Smalls, Triple Z. Frankie Smalls is, um, is off of uh, the movie American Gangster. Frank Lucas meets his wife. And um, she says, he has a club named Smalls there inside of the club. He, she says, so why is your club named Smalls and not Frank's? And he's like, 
well, when you own something, you could call it what you want. And then he, she was like, so why not Frank's? And he was like, well, maybe I should have named it Frankie Smalls. <laughs> and so my wife gave me that name. And okay. it was kind of like a sentimental thing between me and her. Like, Okay, so what's the name of your EP that you're working on? It's called The Real Frank White. The and Real Frank White? Yeah. Okay, what, 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 what's that? What's the motivation behind that? Just, I don't know, the, the power. The power behind it. And uh, it's, it's, it's letting you know that I could do it. I did it, and I'm about to do it again all the way. So who is The Real Frank White? Frankie Smalls. Frankie Smalls, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. All oh. right, so... Your goal right now is you're basically, you've had success back home. I mean, you've been on the radio mm -hmm. out in Houston, mm -hmm. and you've been moving around. I've been, uh, I've been, I went number one in the country last year for uh, six months straight on the DRT charts. Then I went, all right, the levels to the charts are you start at DRT, which is digital radio. Then you go up to the cash box charts. That's whenever you start getting getting paid. And then so I got all the way up to number 12 on the um, cash box chart, and then budget ran out. So I could have made it to the billboard, which is the next step, but I just, uh, I didn't have, I've been coming out of my pocket this whole time, just since I was a, a kid. You know, I, I, I had an uh, independent label back when I started, but after that, I was just by myself. Okay, so what, what kind of situation are you looking for now? I'm, um... I'm tr I'm currently shopping a deal. I'm not in no contracts with anybody, any kind of management contracts or nothing. And so I'm just kind of like up in the air on which direction I'm going to take on the, the record label. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I just, I have what it takes. Everybody knows that. And my numbers are finally where they need to be. So now it's just me dropping this project and seeing where it goes. So, do you know anything about dance? No, not really. I don't dance. I just groove. You groove? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, you haven't heard of any of the dance names, or you don't really know, like, what's going on, mm -hmm. what the kids are doing out here? I mean, uh, TikTok. I, my, TikTok. My kid watches TikTok every day. So, I mean, I see the dancers and stuff. And, and uh, I mean, I've had dance groups uh, perform my stuff, and, and I will in the future. Okay, okay. Well, we want to connect with you on that end, you know, mm -hmm. and see how we can maybe collaborate put something yeah yeah i'm definitely i'm definitely with it man i'm all about just making smart business moves because that's what i i didn't do that before right, right, i didn't have that that business mind but that's why it took me the time it did to get to where i'm at now because i had to i had to come one with myself and figure out what i really wanted in life and my purpose and i figured that out okay so we in a real funny season right now it's 2020 um, it seems like the apocalypse is here. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's COVID. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like really, real talk. Um, and COVID season is here. Um, how has that affected your movement, your just your overall hustle? And you know, what do you even think about the whole? I don't pandemic? even worry about that. My movements have not stopped. I mean, it slowed down my my shows and touring and stuff like that. But other than other than that, I I can't sit down in a restaurant. I hate that. I like going to to damn restaurants and sitting down, not eating in my car. Right, right. You know, right. right. It's kind of like everything is just, you know. Hold up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even with the um, the cash now they got the um contactless cards. Man, I had, to, I had to walk in a restaurant the other day and they just made me take my glasses off and look in the camera and to tell me if I had a temperature. What the what? fuck? I swear to God. <laughs> they told you to take your glasses off? They took my glasses off, and then they said, look into the, this, it's going to check your temperature. Uh, at the Hard Rock Cafe. In Atlanta? Yes. Yeah, okay, they're going too far. They that's going too, too far. I was like, I looked at my whole boy like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, that's too much right there. I'm straight on it. I, don't, I mean, that, that ruined my whole experience, just having to go through that. I didn't want to eat there. I, didn't, I almost walked out, because that's sketchy. Yeah. Like, mm -mm. They probably done... Did some shit to my eyes where you could follow my, my path of wherever I go now. Never know, you never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. Because, <laughs> you know, anything that we could see in a movie could be real. So You're right. Or if you see it on South Park. South Park. <laughs> Maybe The Simpsons, you know what I mean? Man, was, yeah, like it was South Park on when I walked in the studio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, ain't it? 
So, okay, so you gonna be in Atlanta for a while, or or I'm what's, here. I'm you here? here. I'm here to stay. Okay, bet, bet, bet. All right, so uh, give us some shout outs, man. Who you want to shout out? I want to shout out everybody that messes with me and everybody that hates me. I'm a, I'm that guy. There's no in between with me. You either love me or you hate me, and so the haters keep me going on the internet for sure. Right. They get they get people talking, and then they every time I go live, bro, they like how much you, you want for the couch. How much is the couch? Uh, it's, a, it's the trolls. They get on there and they start talking about a couch. I'm like, it's a, it's a, ca- a couch auction. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 no, but I, I just want to, I, I shout out my, my, my management, my, my um, engineer, my, my wife, my fam, my family. You know what I'm saying? That's my family. Well, and then, uh, you about to see what's going on with me in, in a couple of weeks. It's DDC TV online. Get with it or get gone. Bow. Hey. <laughs> Y'all go check out my single with uh, Lil Key. It's called Shine. It's on uh, YouTube right now, and uh, it almost hit uh, right at a million views. And so we're just working it. Okay. Shine. I got, yeah, Shine. S H Y N E. Okay. Yeah, I thought I just uh, heard that. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was hot. Yeah. Yeah. That was hot. Lil Key, Lil Key going in on it. He, he, uh, that's, that was my way in the door. Okay, H- how did that happen? How did you get hooked up with Lil Key? In the street. Yeah? Yeah, I know his folks in the street. Okay, 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 okay. So you, you met them here in Atlanta or just? Yeah. Okay, word, word, I'll word. I'll be everywhere, man. I'll be in the streets. I, I, I see, I see. I, I just, I go to a lot of studios, man. I stay in the studio, so you meet a lot of people there. That's the place to be, man. That's yeah. where the work gets done. True. Right, right here, boom. You know what I mean? Getting shit done. Right, right, right. I gotta make this shit happen. Yeah, and um, super shout out to Super Sound Studio. Yeah, yeah, super shout out. Tip, you know, Hustle Game, the whole crew. I like that super shout out. Yeah. Super shout out. <laughs> so, you actually had a run in and opportunity to communicate with YSL Management, which mm-hmm. is Young Thug Management. Yeah, his dad, Big Jeff. Yeah. And um, they were, they were, I'm. I'm still it's still it's still up in the air. I'm still I'm still de- making my decision on if I want to take that route or not. And um I just want to make sure this is the best move for me. And it's just a management situation. It's not it's business management. So I still um will be a free agent. I still will be funding my own career. I still be doing all the same things I'm doing now just be able to use YSL stamp, get marketing, promotion, videos and studio time. Which gotcha. that that's a big, that's big. So Video time is huge. Work, yeah, that's I mean that's <coughs> expensive. Yeah, that, that's, that's the bill. That's the bill. <laughs> that is the bill. <laughs> right, right. And I, the way I be in the studio, I like I'm in the studio every day, but I record myself. I have my own studio. I just go to the places like this for the visual and and the the vibes. Like I can create hits in the studio. So you told us that you recorded twelve hundred songs since December. It's still unbelievable, but um, I, I'm looking forward to hearing just one song. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? What What would be the hottest thing you got out right now? Out right now, it would be uh, the Shine song, of course, and then I have Make a Wish. That's my solo single that got me number one on the on the charts on the BLT charts. And um, uh, I mean, all my stuff is hot to me, but that's for y'all to make the decision. You can make that decision. Let me know. Frankie Smalls, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to take the game into a whole nother level. I'm back and ready for action, raising hell like a rebel. Who feeling me now? Bump them haters, talking me down. I'm ready to ride. One man army willing to die. I'm fully disguised. If you bucking, better recognize. I'll be the one that quit the folder in the blink of an eye. Still a soldier like I told you on the real, I spit fire. I'm awakened out of my grave, now my spirit's alive. I'm on a steady paper chase, I'm out to get that dough. You know what I'm saying? All of my diamonds, they shine.